Okay, so in this tutorial we will show the protection part of the Fortsu Crunch API security platform. So a protection is the component that you can put in front of your APIs, uh, whether in a gateway mode, protecting all of the APIs in bulk, or individually for specific APIs um, for, for microservices implementation. And that's what we're going to be looking at in, in this uh, particular video. And so this micro firewall um, checks all the requests and responses and blocks the ones that don't conform uh, to the API contract, thus blocking the attacks. And so um, uh, for this demo, uh, what we will do is we will add an API, we'll have an existing API deployment as a microservice. We'll add that API contract for that API to the foot to crunch platform and then we'll deploy an API micro firewall as a sidecar proxy for this microservice. So upon startup, that micro firewall will um, connect to the foot to crunch deployment, uh, retrieve that configuration, and then use that configuration to locally within that same uh, pod uh, in the Kubernetes deployment protects it. So uh, what I have right now in my deployment is I have um, in uh, in this particular case in Azure Kubernetes service um, I have an application an API deployed um, this is a, a pixie a web app it's a project from um, OWASP uh, DevSlops initiative and it's sort of a purposefully uh, vulnerable uh, web application and API so it has multiple security issues and uh, we will show how Project Crunch Protection can uh, mitigate those uh, issues. And so I, I already have it deployed. And so if I go to my Postman client, um, I have some APIs in here, uh, some of the um, APIs from um, that deployment. And it's a, it's a simple um, app and simply, simple API that allows you to add user records, um, edit user records, um, upload pictures, uh, retrieve pictures, etc. It's a, it's a uh, photo sharing um, service. Um, and so, um, for example, if I want to register this user, I can send uh, that post request uh, to the register endpoint and you can see that I'm, I'm getting a token back. Um, and as I mentioned, it has a lot of vulnerabilities. So, for example, uh, if I send some sort of an unexpected verb like if I send get to this particular endpoint I'm actually getting an um, HTML back um, so I can use that and other information like cookies headers etc to figure out what kind of um, stack is being used um, or more importantly um, I can um, um, data is not getting validated so for example if I want I can uh, spoof um, email domains um, by giving it some sort of different domain uh, for example, if um, if particular company wanted only the employees, only people with specific email domain uh, to get access, I could spoof that and, and uh, this API considers this to be a valid email address. Um, or um, another vulnerability is that, um, for example, for this value, it expects uh, account balance to be positive. So if I send negative, it will actually Oops, or for something that it doesn't know, like for, for another user record, it would fail and it would crash and send me the um, stack trace back so I can see that, uh, for example, this is Mongo, and then I can use that knowledge uh, to send a NoSQL injection. So instead of logging in the expected way by giving the username and password, uh, if I don't know the, uh, the password, I can send a, a NoSQL injection um, so in, in NoSQL world, in the uh, world of Mongo, that actually would work because NE means not empty and uh, the password field is not empty. So this actually works. So anyway, it has multiple vulnerabilities. Um, and uh, let's see how we can fix them uh, by adding the Fortitude Crunch uh, firewall into the picture, this one. Um, so uh, you could use that, uh, so it's, it's Docker image, uh, that micro firewall image, you could download it from the um, Docker Hub, or if in my case, since I'm an Azure 
uh, what I did was I went to the Azure Marketplace and I subscribed to it. I, I clicked that Get It Now button and I've added it to my Azure repository. So it's over here. Here it is, um, that image. And then in my configuration I, uh, for, the, for the firewall, I supplied that, uh, that path to that repository. So um, now going back, to, uh, going to the foot to crunch platform, if you already have the definition imported, you don't have to do that. Uh, I will start by um, importing the definition, the open API file. Uh, for that API, uh, and th th this is the, the definition. I'll go to protection, so protection is not currently configured. So let me go and click protect. As you can see, that um, tool gives you um, information on how to deploy API Micro Firewall uh, in uh, different environments. And uh, uh, you can, depending on, on which deployment you have, what kind of uh, uh, orchestrating, what kind of deployment, uh, you'll get specific, uh, specific instructions here. Um, so again, the first thing that you need to do is to generate the protection token. And this is what uh, that firewall will use to retrieve the configuration. So to do that, and I just click protection tokens. Uh, so I've generated that token. Now uh, I will follow the instructions to actually use it. So I need to supply that token uh, into my Helm chart deployment. So I click copy. Here we go. And now that I have it configured, the next step is to actually add it as a sidecar proxy. To that uh, Pixie API, um, to that Pixie API microservice. Okay, so now um, looks like it succeeded. Let me check what's going on. Yeah, you can see that it's now, it has added, so there's now second um, a container running within that same pod. So now, if I go back, now I have that exact picture, right? So I have microservice and the micro firewall in front of it. So if I go back to uh, Postman, again, if I send something that is sort of expected, regular API use doesn't change, right? But if I try to do something else, like if I send get instead of that post, you can see that this got blocked um, before it even reached the backend. Or if I, again, if I um, send something that is not a proper email address, for example, it just gets blocked. And if I try to send negative value here, remember we crashed it last time, that gets blocked. Um, if I try to send my, uh, my NoSQL injection, it would get blocked, etc. So basically what we've um, demonstrated uh, is that by adding that micro firewall right in front of my microservice by configuring my Kubernetes deployment to use it, um, I automatically protected it. So basically this API micro firewall, um, it is very, very super efficient. As you could see, uh, it, uh, it, it didn't affect performance or anything in any negative way. It runs within the same pod. Uh, but it's very effective protecting against um, any possible attacks because it has that um, API 
uh, definition and it can use that definition 